A stack is a collection of elements with the unique feature being that they are last in, first out. That means whatever goes in last is going to come out first. Think of it like a stack of plates. The first plate you take off is the last one you put on top of the stack of plates. Today we're going to cover absolutely everything you need to know about stacks for coding interviews, including important operations, time and space complexities, and at the end we'll do a coding question together. Stacks have three primary operations. These are push, pop, and peak. Pushing is when you add a new element to the top of the stack. Popping is when you remove the top element of the stack. And peaking is when you just look at what is currently on top of the stack. All of these have a time complexity of big O of one, or constant time, which is why they are optimal for certain problems. In Python, stacks are generally implemented as normal lists. To better understand this, I'll be showing a side-by-side -side visualization of what a stack looks like versus how it is actually implemented in Python code. A stack is usually initialized as an empty list. To push to the stack, you use the normal append method. To pop from the stack, you use the normal pop method. To peek at the top element of the stack, you just access the last element in the list. And that's it. Stacks are really simple to use, especially in Python, because they're basically just using regular lists. It's knowing when to actually use them that's a bit more challenging and what we're gonna talk about next. As you now know, stacks have a last in, first out pattern. Whenever you're looking at a coding problem, ask yourself if having a way to keep track of things in a last in, first out approach would be beneficial. This intuition comes with practice, but here are some common scenarios of when a stack might be useful. Any question that asks you to match parentheses or validate parentheses usually makes use of a stack, because you need them to make sure that the most recent opening bracket is closed before any of the other opening brackets. Similar to parentheses questions, any question that has nested items that need to be closed, solved, or ended in a specific order usually requires stacks. Common examples are manual calculation questions that have an order of operations. Any question that has the ability to undo something or look at the history usually uses a stack because whatever was last visited should be the most recent thing to go back to. Now, let's try a practice coding interview problem to put our stack knowledge to use. The question we're going to be looking at is valid parentheses. This question gives us a string with these types of brackets and is just asking us to determine if the input string is valid. In this case, we know it's valid if all of the opening brackets have closing brackets that close them in the correct order. Now, the first thing that we should be thinking of is, how do we actually pair an opening bracket with its closing bracket? This makes use of a data structure I've talked about in a previous video, which is a hash map. We're going to be using a hash map to link our closing brackets to their corresponding opening brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and code that out now. Okay, so now that we have that hash map, how do we actually go through this and determine whether it's valid? Well, the first thing that should jump out at you with this question is that we know as we go through brackets, whatever our most recent opening bracket is needs to be closed before we can close any other bracket. This is the exact use case of a stack. In this case, we're going to have a stack that keeps track of whatever our most recent opening bracket is and looks to close this one before closing any other opening brackets. So we can go ahead and just initialize an empty list as our stack. From here, we just wanna go through our string and add all of our opening brackets to our stack. And if we hit closing brackets, we wanna close our opening brackets. So for each bracket in the string, first, how do we know if it's an open or a closing bracket? Well, we know that all the closing brackets are keys in the hash map. So if this bracket is in this close to open hash map, we know that it's a closing bracket. And if it's not, we know that it's an open bracket. Now, let's start with what we do with open brackets. If we ever have an open bracket, we know that we just wanna add it to the stack, which we can do using append. Now, what happens when we get to a closing bracket? Well, the first thing we need to do is check if the most recent opening bracket which is on the top of the stack, actually corresponds to this closing bracket. To do this, let's check what's on the top of the stack by popping it off and keeping track of it. Now, 
we have accessed our most recent opening bracket. Let's see if this opening bracket is the value for the corresponding closing brackets key. Now, we just wanna check if our closing bracket matches our most recent open bracket. So if our closing bracket in our hash map here, if the value for that closing bracket is the same as this most recent opening bracket, then we know that it's valid and we can continue. But if it's not the same, then we know that it's invalid and we can already go ahead and return the entire thing as false because we know that it doesn't work. So now we have a way of going through and checking if our opening bracket to match our closing brackets. But there are two sort of edge cases that we need to account for. The first one is what happens if we get to a closing bracket, but there are no more opening brackets to close. Well, this would be invalid. And to test for this, if we hit a closing bracket, there must be something still in the stack, because if there's not, then we know there's no opening brackets to close. So if the stack has nothing in it, we can also go ahead and return false. Lastly, let's look at the opposite, which is where we go through everything and we still have opening brackets that are unclosed after we've gone through everything. Well, in this case, what we wanna do is check after we've gone through it, are there still things in the stack? If there are, it means there were opening brackets that weren't closed and this is invalid, so we should return false. If everything has been closed, the stack should be empty and we can go ahead and return true. Now, let's see if this runs properly and if we've done it right. As you can see, all the test cases were accepted, so we can go ahead and submit it. And there we go. Now we can successfully say that we have a working understanding of how stacks work and we can apply them to any coding problems we'll see in interviews. Congratulations, you know how to use stacks now for any coding problem. Stacks are a pretty easy concept, but there are some advanced ways to use stacks that are a bit more difficult. One common type is called a monotonic stack. This is a type of stack that follows a specific ordering of its elements, either increasing or decreasing. This functionality is often used to optimize algorithms by efficiently finding the next element that satisfies a certain condition in a sequence. Creating a monotonic stack has a time complexity of big O of n, whereas using a sort method has a time complexity of big O of n log n, which makes monotonic stacks a lot more efficient in certain problems. An excellent example of where a monotonic stack is great is the leak code question daily temperatures. I won't be solving the question in this video, but if you want to try it yourself, the link is in the description. Maybe in the future, I'll create a separate video on monotonic stacks, so subscribe if you want to stay tuned for that and other videos in this series. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video where we're going to be covering cues.